Silent Siren are back. Yes, this is something I wasn't expecting to say to you today, but I got the most awesome message on my line app. I started seeing it on Twitter. It's completely true. They are back. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the announcement, talking a little bit about why this is so important, just in case you're not familiar with Silent Siren already, and also talking about my thoughts on what this means moving forwards. So let's get started. Hi there and welcome back to Japan and let's start first of all with the announcement itself. Like I mentioned I got notifications about this today on Line App, on Twitter, but we're going to go straight through to the Silent Siren website and this is what they actually announced translated through the browser so I can read it for you guys. And it says, Silent Siren has been suspended since December of 2021, but we're pleased to announce that it will resume its activities from Countdown Japan. So that's a festival at the end of December just before New Year. Um, we have been waiting a long Long time for our fans but we hope you can look forward to the year-end concert and then just skipping ahead here it says as for drummers support members will participate I am so excited to see who that is I mean as we'll mention in a minute you know Silent Siren are a band with a lot of friends I mean we could end up with like an Akane support drummer Akane from Bandmade I'm not gonna get too hopeful but Whoever it is, that's really cool, but I'm really looking forward to seeing who ends up being a support drummer here. I'm just going to skip down as well. It mentions this is a message apparently directly from the band, so that first message was from the management. This uh, message from the band says, Silent Siren has been on hiatus for about two years, but has decided to resume its activities. Thanks to everyone who believed in Silent Siren's music and waited for us during the hiatus. We were able to resume our activities this time. Uh, we'll continue to deliver the music that only we can do with the slogan of Youth for Life and return the favor for everyone who supports us, supported us. Um, thank you for your continued support of Silent Siren. Um, yeah, so there you go, that's the announcement. I think that's brilliant. So. Let's start by just talking quickly for, in case you're a new person, about why Silent Siren is so important. So Silent Siren first formed in 2010, but the version that most of us are familiar with is the major label version that really debuted in 2012. So went for about nine years before the hiatus in 2021. And essentially what makes Silent Siren so special is the fact that, to be honest, they do a joyful version of pop that is very, very infectious, very easy to get into, but is full of different nuances and quality. They are really great musicians. And you might probably be saying at this point, how would we got a lot of bands like that? But I would say go check out out of their body of material. Everything from Cherry Bomb, which is probably the most sugary sweet song as you can imagine from the name, through to things like Fujiyama Disco, which everyone knows for that incredible bass line and just being a really good hard rocking song for something that is still essentially pop. You have songs like August Night, which are really heartfelt, and then songs as well like uh, Kane, which is even more heartfelt. There's a real tearjerker of a song, all the way up to things which are just, you know, you've got songs which are acoustic tracks, you've got rockier songs like Up To You. They've got a a real variation of songs but at the same time it's all good quality stuff that fits in that accessible pop category this band really typifies so much of what Japanese music can be at its best which is good quality musicianship delivering like really accessible music with a lot of detail sort of thing that anyone can enjoy but also anyone can get something from whether you be someone who just likes your music simple whether you really like good musicianship and you want to hear nuance they've got the whole lot and you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna hashtag no bias say it as well they're one of those few bands who actually does this with a keyboard player i hate to say it but as much as i love so many of the other bands in this sort of pop rock space most of them don't have a keyboard player and when you're doing pop keyboard is so useful it's literally the sound that can be anything if you go listen to albums like sai sai san 31313 that album in particular is a really good one where you just listen to it the keyboard gives so much life to everything it gives them the ability to add these little sounds that just other bands, other of their contemporaries just don't have in their repertoire. And for me, that means that they are a band who are just so able to capture so many different things and yet make it all sound so effortlessly sweet and easy going. Yes, this is a band who I really think are just they're such a quintessential example of what makes Japanese pop rock so great and I am so glad to have them back. So, so what happened and where have they been? Well, this really brings us to 2020, which was a period when they were in the process of releasing their most recent album to date, Mixed Tenth, which is Mixed Juice, if you want to go through with the whole 
um, album title word game thing. But anyway, they were in the process of releasing the album and it was a very strong album. Didn't think it was quite as strong as the one that came directly before, but it certainly was the sound of a band who had a lot of life and a lot of cool things going on. However, at that point, you know, the whole COVID thing had a real effect and you could see that even in Japan where there wasn't enforced shutdowns, everything was kind of closing down, the venues were closing down. And, you know, at that time, a lot of bands went silent, but Silent Siren did not ironically go silent. They were along with, I must call out I Love Me as being the other band who really for me stood out here. They released a series of fun videos that were just such a beacon of light in that dark time. I think they were one of the most fun bands just showing again their personality personalities really came through and that's another thing that I think so many people love about Silent Siren is the fun, the personality, the sense that they were just sort of joyous people who wanted to enjoy every single second and their videos really showed that. Unfortunately during that process, um, not because of that process but at some point during that process you know, a lot of people obviously are thinking about what they would want to do with their future. And it was during that whole time that Hina, the drummer, then chose to leave. And Silent Siren had always had a big thing about these sort of family connections, about how tight they were as a group. You know, I mean, just before that announcement came out, Ayanyan had actually released a series of little cartoon uh, stories in a book, which was about how tight they all were as a family. So it was kind of something that no one expected when Hina left. Um, I did a video where I had sort of talked about, you know, things on this subject, so I'm not going to get hugely into it now. But, you know, when she left, it was one of those things where the band then went on, they did like some final shows as the whole COVID thing, you know, sort of rolled on. And they wound up the band, they said, we're going to go on hiatus. But there was this feeling that Hina had left and the family unit had been broken, and that was kind of where it was going to end. So... It was something where, I must admit, I was not hugely hopeful that they were going to come back. Obviously, I wanted them to come back, but I was thinking this felt like a band who'd carried a sort of a scar of, okay, well, I guess that's kind of it. And, you know, they'd always relied so much on the energy of this sort of youthful energy that they always had. And so in their 30s and everything, which is still pretty young, but, you know, it's something where that youthful image, a lot of the time, you know, some people... It's critical if you carry that image too long. I was thinking maybe they're looking at their lives, maybe they're reviewing their lives, and maybe they're just going to say, well, look, you know, maybe this was the time to quit. You know, maybe Hina was the one to make that jump and everyone else is just going to nod and go along with it. And so many things gave me the feeling that that was where they were at. You looked at a lot of the photographs that came out directly afterwards when they announced the whole Saiyan project. Um, they were all in their sort of business suits and everything looked a little bit more sort of cool and serious. It's like, oh, that's, we, I mean, we know they've grown up, but it was clear that they were sort of leaning into that side of things. I was really happy to see Yuka on, uh, you know, taking her clothing brand all the way and, you know, sort of really making that a thing. But as we know, clothing brands are one of the most difficult businesses to get off the ground. And after a couple of years, she kind of decided to, you know, stop really doing that in a major way. We had, um, well, Sue was getting involved in all kinds of things, including like, uh, you know, there was this girl band for her, which was cool. But at the same time, there was a slight feeling, you know, she was playing around with a lot of projects that I don't know how much of that was instigated by her and like NFT things. So that was a bit strange. Ainyan carried on with her artwork and everything. Um, I should also say for Sue that she did some singing as well, but I wanted to hear more singing. I was really hoping to maybe we'll see a solo album or something from her. Um, but we got a featurette and another song, but nothing quite like that. And there was always a sense, and you know, they had this app as well, the Clubhouse app. There wasn't no, it wasn't Clubhouse. It was Chateau. <laughs> Must remember different. <laughs> so they had the Chateau app. Um, I've still got that app. I'm still not 100% sure what that is. <laughs> um, you know, it was pretty clear that Silent Siren had a lot of um, ideas and as good as it was to see them enjoying those things and going off trying things, it was kind of clear that none of them were really bursting out and having huge success. Ayanyan just looked like she was having fun running around doing all of her usual crazy things. But it was a big question of, are they just going to sort of let this peter out and just sort of roll off of that and, you know, enjoy their careers and then maybe come back in 10 years time and do a reunion tour? That is unfortunately how I saw it going. Um, and then out of nowhere, we get this announcement. And boy, oh boy, am I excited about 
silent siren coming back. So let's talk about now the most important thing, which is their return. And yeah, as I say, so glad to see this, but this also opens up the door for so much potential. I mean, Silent Siren are, as I mentioned before, a band who bring a sort of high level of musical quality and also musical variation to very accessible music. But because they're in that pop space, because they have a keyboard player, and because now they don't have a drummer, that does mean that they technically have very few limitations on what they can actually do. I mentioned this previously in that space between Hina leaving and the band going on hiatus initially, that this was a moment when the band could do pretty much anything. And one of the singles we got, I think the last proper single A-side that came out from Silent Siren was a song called Familiar. And yeah, I know that the drum line in that was taken from previous things, but still it had this very different sound where it kind of went into a slightly dancey pop area which was a little bit different from what they've done before but it just showed what they could do when they were just basically keyboard guitar and bass when there is so little tying them to anything and this is often the power of three pieces is because a three piece kind of you expect them to play around with different things because they've got such a small setup you expect them to play with different things and I'm really excited to see what Silent Siren play with moving forwards I'm excited to see what sounds they get the photograph that they released for this announcement showed them still you know looking kind of fun looking a little bit hippie but looking like a band who felt very free, very young at heart, and that's kind of what has me excited. The very fact that in the announcement it talks about youth. It's, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not saying I want them to pretend to be kids or anything, I just like the fact that that youthful energy is very much at work, and I hope that goes into the creativity of what they do. Now, I do know that they have their one chief staff writer who basically does most of the writing for them, and they have their hand in it as well, but they are a team however you cut it, and they have a certain system by which they work, and I'm really excited to see that coming back now with that fresh energy. Now, it could be that if they do another album, oh my God, that's what I'm looking forward to. If they do do another album though, um, I said do do, they could well have, you know, all kinds of guest drummers on that. They could have no drummer. They could do it with synth drums, which I know for some people is a sin. And I love acoustic drums as any, much as anyone. But when you've got a band like this who can throw in variation, why not have a bit of synth drum? Why not do some stuff to a drum machine now and then? Just so frees you up to do all kinds of craziness. I really can't wait to see how this refreshed feeling goes. And what, to be honest, what I really want is I really want, and I, th I think a lot of people maybe for a Silent Siren fan, if you agree with what I said about what the core qualities of the group are, I suspect you probably agree with this as well. I want Silent Siren to not come back feeling like they have to remind us exactly who they were by doing the same sound we've heard before. I want them to come back and feel refreshed to reinvent their identity and have fun with that whilst maintaining that youthful energy. And that's exactly what the announcement sounded like they want to do as well. So I am excited to see this. I'm gonna try and see that show in December, but something makes me think I'm not gonna be able to save up enough money to go to a festival at the end of December. I'll give it a shot though. Either way, um, assuming that Silent Siren are back to stay, then I will definitely be seeing them sometime because I need to make up for the fact that I didn't see them three years ago. Really, really excited. So there you have it. I'm frankly super excited, as you can probably tell for this. I think this is just a wonderful asset returning to the Japanese music scene. Um, as I mentioned before, just something which is so quintessentially, you know, what we want from Japanese pop rock, you know, fun, good musicianship, a range of different moods, but very accessible as well. Yet this is a band who didn't you know, break out to foreign audiences as much. I think part of that might be Sue's got a higher style of vocals and there's a certain innocence to the music that doesn't always carry as well. You know, you notice a lot of the harder music gets out of Japan more than the sort of the slightly more fluffy feeling stuff, but this is fluffy feeling with quality. And I think if you're already into Japanese music and following a channel like this, you're probably already over that threshold in which you can appreciate this kind of music. You know, Silent Siren did so well in Japan and in a lot of the Asian countries around, you know, sort of you go to places like Taiwan, and you know, Philippines, you have people who use Silent Siren. And so I'm really hoping that if you knew them before, you're going to be really excited. And if you didn't know them, go check them out. There's so many great songs I was mentioning earlier. You know, everything from the sort of sweetness of Cherry Bomb all the way through to things like Fujiyama Disco with that sort of really cool slap bass and you know, a lot of really cool guitar lines and things in there. Um, we could just name songs all day long. Yeah, this is a really cool band. 
Go check them out if you haven't already. Feel free to message me if you just want to get my opinions on songs you can listen to. Um, anyway, there you go. Those are my thoughts. Silent Siren are back. This is amazing news. Get in the comments. Tell me what you're excited about. Are you excited for a new album? Are you excited for live stuff? What do you think it's going to sound like? What are you hoping for? And until I hopefully see you very soon in Japan for the next one of these videos, for now, ciao, ciao.